Hey guys, it's Chris at Highland Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned the honor and privilege of your subscription. I'm sure many of you are familiar with videos that are posted on YouTube from a gentleman by the name of Jim Lill. Uh, his videos um, have been out for a couple of years now, and he has one in particular where he talks about where the tone comes from in an electric guitar. And that video was published, um, I think about two years ago. And as I make this video in June of 2024, um, it's garnered 2.2 million views. So it's a very popular video. And what he does is he conducts some simple experiments to try to figure out where the tone in an electric guitar comes from. You know, is it the pickups? Is it the woods? The electronic controls? Uh, where is it coming from? And what he has done is he's produced an excellent video that offers a hypothesis. Okay. His videos are not science. They are not scientific. He doesn't follow scientific processes and procedures to arrive at his hypothesis. He simply does the experiments, the tests, and lets us kind of decide for ourselves what the outcome is. That is not science. Now, Jim doesn't claim that it's science. However, I have had viewers tell me that they are science. And unfortunately, what that does is it confirms in my mind that there are a lot of people out there who simply don't understand what scientific methods and procedures are. You can't simply make a video where you do some tests and call that science. It doesn't work that way. You have to follow very rigorous processes and procedures and methods and techniques in order for the work that you do to be considered science. You have to, first of all, develop a hypothesis. Then you have to design a test. Then that test has to be executed in a controlled environment, after which the results need to be published in a peer-reviewable uh, journal. Then peers, who are scientists like yourself, and I forgot to mention that, you have to be a scientist to do this. You can't just be any Joe Blow off the streets with an idea. You have to be a scientist. And your peers will re review the results of your work. And in many cases, they will replicate that experiment that you performed in order to either prove or disprove your hypothesis. Once that has been accomplished, and let's say for sake of argument, your peers have confirmed what you discovered in your tests, it then becomes scientific theory. It's really very simple, but you can't do a comparison test and make a video and post it to YouTube and call it science. It just simply isn't what, that's not what it is. And it, we have to be pretty thankful that it isn't like that because then science would be riddled with poorly executed uh, methods and procedures to try to determine what is truly science. Now over the years, I've made a number of videos where I have talked about wood and its effect on tone as well as, uh, for example, laminated guitar necks. Those are the two topics that I have done videos on in the past, which have garnered a lot of controversy. And a lot of times folks will comment on those videos by expressing their opinion, which is fine. I encourage that. But your opinion is just that. It's not scientific fact. Furthermore, you cannot take science that has been done in other areas and apply it to something completely different. It doesn't work that way. Science in one arena is science in that arena. It's not science in all arenas. So when I say that 
a poorly constructed laminated guitar neck is worse than a one piece guitar neck, you can't come back and tell me that laminated wood is always better and it's been proven in the construction industry because the methods and techniques for testing laminated wood in the construction industry is completely different than what we would do to test a laminated guitar neck. So the science of laminated construction does not apply to a laminated guitar neck. Same thing is true with the so-called tone wood debate. Just because you can prove that certain materials have certain effects on certain situations, um, like in the hi-fi industry, doesn't mean it's going to translate over to an electric guitar. That's an apples to orange comparison and it's not science. That's part of the reason why science is so rigorous in how it is executed. We can't have people falsely applying tests from one study into another study because it's not correct, it's inaccurate. So we have to make sure that the science is an orange to orange or apples to apples comparison. And unfortunately, in the world of electric guitars, a lot of the studies that I, for one, would love to see done haven't been done and probably never will. To my knowledge, nobody has ever conducted bona fide scientific research on wood and its effect on tone in an electric guitar or whether or not a laminated neck is even viable. And the reason for that is simple, it's cost. I mean, when you look at the pharmaceutical industry as an example, a drug maker can spend billions and billions of dollars to develop just one drug. So that kind of gives you an idea of how expensive scientific research is. And because of this, no one is going to front the money to do that kind of research on an electric guitar simply because the electric guitar is not a critical component in the advancement of the human species. Yeah, they're, they're fun and we enjoy them and they bring uh, great satisfaction to our lives. Or... <laughs> great frustration. But in the end, there's no reason to do that level of scientific research. So what we're left with is expressing our opinions. Now, when Jim Lill posted up his video about where the tone comes from an electric guitar, what he was doing was he was presenting a hypothesis. It's not a scientific study. Nothing about his video it would indicate that it was done in the method that is required for it to be considered a scientific study. It wasn't done in a controlled environment. There was no uh, opportunity for peers to review and conduct the same tests themselves separately and to confirm his results. And when all of that is necessary for it to be considered real science. So in the end, what Jim posted is entertaining hypothesis. And maybe someday someone down the road will see that and think, we're going to repeat this process, but we're gonna do it in a controlled laboratory environment. We're gonna publish our findings in a scientific journal, and then we're gonna let our scientist peers review it, replicate the experiment, and then we can confirm the results. But until then, it's just a hypothesis. It's it's a little more than an opinion, but it isn't scientific theory. Unfortunately, another problem is science has really taken it on the chin in the last couple of decades. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, science has gotten so complicated that most people don't even understand how it's conducted. So as a result, they feel it's okay to express their opinion and that their opinions are equal to scientific fact, which of course they're not. The other problem is science hasn't always lived up to our expectations. Uh, we still have a lot of diseases out there that have not been cured by the miracle of modern science. And we've come to realize that there are limitations uh, to what we can expect science to accomplish. And then of course there is the whole issue of science sometimes delivering bad news. In fact, in recent years, it seems like science has been delivering more bad news than good. As a result, I think a lot of people prefer to discount it, to lose faith in it, or just to simply deny it. Uh, unfortunately, 
what science keeps proving is not going away. So I hope you have found this video to be thought provoking. I'd love to hear what you think down in the comment section below. And until the next episode, take care, stay safe. And if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go watch a YouTube video on how to conduct brain surgery.